Itoki Sakurama was a normal kid preparing for his first year of high school, until one day, when he is suddenly attacked by ninjas. He then discovers that he is the heir of a secret ninja clan and must prepare to take his place in the hidden world of the modern-day shinobi in Shinobi no Itoki Season 1 from Troika. During class, Itoki looks outside of the class window and sees a ninja in the distant building. Another student sees him looking outside and reports him to the teacher, stating he is sleeping. Itoki denies it, but the teacher asks him to solve the math problem, and Itoki does it. After class, other students call Itoki to join them for karaoke and Itoki do wants to, but is busy with other lessons and must decline. Heading home, Itoki is followed by Kosetsu, a childhood friend who follows Itoki's mother request to make sure he doesn't skip lessons. Itoki calls her to walk by his side, but she refuses and prefers staying behind him. While walking home, Itoki recalls his conversation with a gymnastics teacher, who asks him to consider pursuing gymnastics in high school as he sees talent in him. Itoki then realizes he will be late for cram school and runs taking a shortcut through some backyards and parks. He gets almost hit by a truck, who crashes, but Itoki manages to jump over it. At the local combi store, a regular customer complains at Tokusada for finding bugs in her greens, but Tokusada doesn't really care and tells her to deep fry them. His manager Kozo then drags him behind and Ria apologizes to the customer. Takasada explains that she is a regular complainer and Kozo knows, but still he shouldn't say such things. Yumika decides to take the storefront as Tokisada isn't good at customer service. She tells Tokisada he can leave for today but asks him to pick up Itoki from cram school. After Tokisada picks up Itoki, he tells him about the truck incident and that the truck had its front tires burst. While there were no injured people, Tokisada notes that Itoki is too good and shouldn't have gone to cram school. Later, Yumika goes home and Itoki helps her make dinner. Next day, Itoki goes to school with Kozetsu following him again. He ends up finding a love letter in his locker, which surprises him. He thinks about it the whole day and after school, he meets with the girl, Satomi Tsubaki. She is a year younger but explains that she has been always watching him and she even saw him dodge the truck yesterday. She then asks him to become his girlfriend. Itoki returns home in good mood and his mother, Yumika, quickly realizes he got a girlfriend. She starts asking him who she is and how he knows her, and if she is pretty and a nice girl. Itoki, however, explains that he doesn't really know her, but it's his first time being confessed and wants to go out with her on Sunday. Here he doesn't know her, Yumika's attitude changes and is against he is dating her, which annoys Itoki. Itoki still decides to date her and meets Satomi on Sunday at Aiga Station. He wonders where she wants to go, and Satomi invites him to her place. At her place, nervous, Itoki wonders what she wants to do, and Satomi stands up and undresses. She gets on him and states she likes him and attempts to kiss him, but Itoki pushes her away, explaining he isn't prepared for this as they just met. As he is nervous, he jokes this must be a prank and checks under the bed, but to his surprise, he sees a ninja under the bed. Satomi then takes out a kunai and kicks his cheek, stating he is sharp. More ninjas appear, and Satomi prepares to kill Itoki. A kunai breaks through the window, causing a smoke screen and Kosetsu comes, throwing Itoki out of the window and faces the ninjas. Kozo and Riha then take him in a car and drive away. They get followed by a jeep who bursts their front tires and causes them to crash. Kozo and Riha fight the ninja and Riha tells Itoki to go and find a place with many people. Not understanding what's going on, Itoki runs and reaches the city. A blackout occurs and a police officer appears asking Itoki what he is doing there. Itoki tries to explain what happened, but the officer tells him to calm down and explains the power is shut down as a new transformer is being installed. In that moment, a ninja appears and cuts the officer's throat. More ninjas appear and they capture Itoki. A moment later as the power comes back, Tokusada shows up and asks Itoki how his date was. Takasada knows the police officer is playing dead and the officer then stands up and joins the ninjas. Takasada then gears up and beats the ninjas and saves Itoki. Itoki later awakens in a car with Takasada and Kosetsu. Takasada then tells him to get out and head up the stairs on the hill as that's their Sakuraba family home. Going there, Itoki is surprised to see they have a big mansion. As Yumika shows up, everyone bows to her and she tells Itoki to call her chief while they are there. Yumika explains they are shinobi of the Aiga village and that there are many other villages in the country who have blended with society. They have formed strict rules, and that's how they managed to maintain balance for decades. However, Koga Village recently has been trying to upset the balance. The Koga are the most powerful and wealthy ninjas. Aiga had found that Koga intends to take over Aiga and the ones who attacked Itoki are from Koga. They are after Itoki's life as he is the 19th Aiga Ninja Village's successor. Yumika then asks Itoki to become a ninja. At Koga meeting, the Koga salute their substitute village chief, Kenomenobe. Kiro states that flesh wounds heal in time. 
but heart wounds will continue to ache in the future. They recently lost their village chief Kishinmaru and Kido, intends to make them pay, an eye for an eye, and they will take revenge on the Aiga ninjas. To be able to protect himself, Yumiko wants Itoki to become a ninja. Itoki still doesn't believe ninja exist and wants to call the police, but Kozo tells him they can outwit the police. Takasada takes Itoki outside and gives him two options, become a ninja or die. Itoki is still confused about everything as he had a normal life until few hours ago and wonders when a ninja is even. Takasada then gives him a third option, he will help him escape until things calm down. He reveals that Yumika ordered him that if Itoki wants it. He proceeds to explain that Itoki's father was the village chief, but he died when Itoki was a kid and Yumika became the chief. She wasn't a ninja, but stepped up into the ninja world and protected the village. Itoki cries and states he can't leave his mother alone. Satomi learns that Itoki is sheltered at the Aiga estate and is out of their reach. She and the ninja with her then fear that they will bring disgrace to Enbi, and they can be expelled or even worse. Satomi is determined to make Aiga pay. At Koga meeting, Housen questions Enbi if the attack on Aiba was initiated by his subordinates and tells him that the NSC has already heard about it, and that puts Koga in danger. The two continue to argue, but Kyoto stops them as there is no point in arguing between themselves. In the morning, Rhea tells Itoki that going to school is too dangerous and shows him a video of Kokuten Ninja Academy, explaining he will be attending it. It's the only ninja school in Japan. Reha explains that it's a hidden school that non-student ninja can't sneak into, it has dorms where Itoki can live in safety and is operated under NSC's jurisdiction. To get in, Itoki will have to go through the admission exam in two days. Itoki wonders what NSC is, Reha explains it's the National Ninjutsu Security Measures Committee. She reveals there was a major war in the ninja world about seven years ago and NSC was formed after that to avoid further conflicts between villages. Housen visits Yumika's store and introduces himself Koga Holdings' sales director. He reveals that they are increasing their wholesale price and that Nimmin Confections are now a subsidiary of Koga Holdings. Kozo is annoyed that they are buying business partners to pressure another village and wonders if it's not a violation of the ninja ordinances. Housen states NSC states there was no issue. Hearing that, Yumika has no choice and accepts the new terms. At dinner that night, Itoki asks Yumika if his father died because he was ninja, but Yunika that doesn't answer him and just tells him to eat his dinner. The day of the exam comes, but Takasada still haven't learned the location of the exam, so he tells Itoki they need to wait. Itoki wonders if it's okay that he hasn't practiced at all as ninja are supposed to use ninjutsu. Takasada and Kosetsu give him a strange look and try to explain that you can't create something out of nothing. Takasada then gets a call and is shocked to learn the location. Takasada then takes them to Koga's service area. Itoki and Kozetsu enter and she tells Itoki to ask the worker where the ninja meal is. Annoyed, Itoki does and the woman tells him to go in a back area. Going there, they enter a room where they see other students and a man who explains they will be starting the exam now. He explains that the test will be a mock ninja practical exam of hide and seek. The examinees are split into hiders and seekers. The hider will leave first and hide somewhere within the service area, and a minute later, the seeker will leave and try to find him in 10 minutes. If hiders are not found, they win, while the seeker needs to find and touch the hider to pass the exam. Kozetsu starts first and easily finds his hider. Itoki is seeker and Maiko Yasukawe is hider. Right before leaving, she looks at Itoki and grins. Itoki recognizes that she is Satomi. After she goes to hide, Itoki goes looking for her. Takasada takes out a Koba ninja who tried to kill Itoki. Kozetsu then warns Itoki that it's not just Satomi, but another Koba ninja is there too. If Itoki runs, he will be disqualified. She tells him to be on his guard and that she and Takasada will try to protect him. Another ninja tries to kill Itoki, but Kosetsu protects him and sees that he is using optical camouflage gear. She goes after the ninja in the bathroom and sees it's Satomi. She engages her in combat, but Satomi lets other ninja fight Kosetsu and goes after Itoki. In the store, Itoki takes a fire extinguisher and starts using it and yelling there's fire. The anti-fire system then activates and the water reveals Satomi, who attempts to attack Itoki, but Kosetsu kicks her. A moment later, ninja come and capture Satomi and take her away. Itoki wants to touch her, but the examiner tells him the time had already ran out when he activates the sprinklers. He wonders why he did it as there are other counters to optical camouflage and ninja should draw as little attention as possible. Itoki explains he didn't want to get anyone else involved and wanted to get the people out of danger. Itoki has failed and wonders what to do and Takasada tells him they have an island with no infrastructure and he can hide there until the next exam. Takasada then receives a call which surprises him and tells Itoki that he passed. Hayato Bushogawara, captain of the 1st Division of NSC, 
tells Kido that they have arrested Satomi and four others for attempted murder and misuse of ninja tools. Kido apologizes but explains that those five had disappeared last month and Koba had been pursuing them as fugitive ninjas. Hayato warns Kido that if something else happens, Koga will have to take responsibility. As Hayato leaves the Koga building, he hits a call that Satomi has died. Kamenami Mitsuhashi questions Juzen Jiraibo on why he let Itoki pass. Juzen explains that the character for Shinobi is written with blade and heart, and you cannot be a shinobi without heart. Tokusada reports to Yumika and states that they believe Koga has reached the academy and even NSC. She asks Tokusada what he thinks of Kishimuro's assassination and the suspicion towards Aiga. Tokusada states that without a doubt there is a traitor in the Aiga village. At his school graduation, Itoki shows up to say goodbye to his schoolmates and explains he will be moving to a school in Tokyo. Later, he is taken by Tokusada to Tokyo, where he and Kosetsu get on an underground train. After three hours, they arrive on a series of islands where his new school is located. There, he sees a girl and stares at her. As she notices, she guesses they haven't met before and introduces herself as Ryoko Suzuno. Itoki starts to believe he will enjoy his school life. As he looks around, he doesn't notice that Kozetsu is going elsewhere and he ends up bumping into some guys from Koga, who recognize him, but girl comes acting like she knows Itoki and takes him away. She guesses he is a transfer student and explains that those guys were elite Koga ninjas. She introduces herself as Kurei Kisagawa and is surprised to learn that Itoki is from Iga, as everyone has heard about the Iga ninjas. Although Iga's situation isn't as good as before, she suggests being friends and Itoki agrees. The school principal, Juzen Jiraibo, congratulates the students for reaching the next grade. He reminds them of the three ninja principles, do not be discovered, do not kill, and do not betray. Kurei ends up in the same class as Itoki and he introduces Kozetsu to her. At lunch, Itoki is excited to buy himself some food, but Kurei orders him the ninja meal. She explains that Koba Ninja is the one with money, and if he orders something more expensive, he may tick them off, so it's better to just avoid them. In that moment, the Koga Ninja notices that Itoki looks at them and Himura gets angry wondering if Itoki is trying to pick a fight. Itoki isn't aware of what is happening, and that only annoys Himura more as he thinks he is screwing with them. Suzaku tells him to calm down. Suzaku then wonders if Itoki doesn't really know anything and explains that Kishimaru, the Koba chief, had been killed by Aiga. Suzaku explains how great Kishimaru was and that he was trying to compromise with all villages and didn't deserve to die. Koga won't forgive Aiga and will destroy them. Tokusada wonders why Yumika didn't tell Itoki anything, but she explains she wanted the truth to come out and then tell him. Takasada wants to use more force to get to the truth, but Yumika doesn't allow him. Itoki sees his new dorm and gets excited at how good it looks. However, Karai tells him that this isn't his dorm and leads him to a house in bad shape, causing Itoki to wonder if it's haunted. Karai explains she also lives here and that the previous dorm was Koga's. She tells him that girls are on the third floor, while boys stay on the second. Later, Kosetsu enters Itoki's room and tells him to not think of what the Koga said, and is better to spend his time in training. The next day, they combine two of the classes for field training. Kamenami explains that they will be learning hands on how to use ninja suits and ninja cores. While everyone knows about them from their previous years, Itoki is hearing about the suit and cores for the first time. Kamenami points at the next island and explains they need to get to the roof of the tower. The principle is they're eating manju and they need to bring one manju back as proof they reached it. There is a time limit as the principal loves manju and is slowly eating them all. Itoki manages to activate the suit but is unable to operate it and is unable to move. While most students have already left, Ryoko decides to help out Itoki and helps him sizing and adjusting his suit. As she helps, she's too excited and can't stop talking about the technology behind the suits and the cores. When she is done, Itoki gets excited he can move but ends up falling from the cliff. To his surprise, he is totally fine. Ryoko explains it's thanks to the suit, which is powered by the ninja core, and he must be careful not to damage it, otherwise his suit will lose power. Itoki thanks her for explaining and helping him out. Ryoko reveals she is from Sega Village, and for generations they have been producers of ninja tools, including suits and cores, which is why she loves ninja tools. She also reveals that each suit has its own characteristics depending on what village is the ninja from, but Itoki stops her as he has already got too much information. Meanwhile, Suzuku almost climbs up the tower. He sees Kozetsu behind him and attacks her, but she manages to hang on and reaches the top second. Before leaving, he questions her if she thinks her skill is enough to protect Itoki. Itoki and Ryoko reach the bridge connecting the islands. On the middle of it, they see Suzuku, who attempts to attack Itoki, but Kozetsu blocks his attack. In the forest on the second island, Kurei is surrounded by Homura and other Koga ninja, and he tells her to give up her manju. 
Reaching the island, Itoki notices something and tells Ryoko to continue without him. Itoki finds Kure, who explains she was attacked by Kova, who also broke her core. Itoki wants to tell the teachers, but she tells him not to as the principal had said that, that if they are not caught doing certain things, and it's okay as they are ninjas. The Kova picks up on another student, but Itoki shows up and tells them to stop. He rushes at Homura, who just dodges and Itoki hits a wall. The Koga then start beating him up. Itoki attempts to break the core of Homura, but is unable to. As they were about to finish him off, the principal shows up and stops them. Itoki returns to Kurei and gives her Manju, revealing he got it back from Homura as they fought. Homura returns to Kamenami but can't find his Manju. He gets angry and then realizes that Itoki wasn't going for his core, but to steal his Manju. As he yells in anger, Suzaku slaps him for his disgraceful display. Itoki carries Kurei to the bridge, where he meets with Ryoko, who is returning after getting her Manju. As Itoki needs to go and get his Manju, he leaves Kurei to Ryoko and asks her to help her out. Itoki reaches the top and sees that there is only one Manju left. Juzen states that the character for Shinobi is written with blade above heart, but you can't be a Shinobi with just blade or heart, and then proceeds and eats the Manju, shocking Itoki. At lunch, Itoki notices that everyone is avoiding him. Homura and the other Koga reveal they had threatened everyone who talks to the Aiga ninja and Itoki will be now alone. After he gets his food, Itoki sits with Kosetsu and is joined by Ryoko and Kurei. Meanwhile, Takasada receives a note telling him to infiltrate Koga. Hayato gives a report of Kishimura's murder case. They basically have no evidence, but by the lacerations they know the murder weapon was Iga's ninja sword. Because of that, they will be investigating Tokusada Kaga. Shivam Kozuki is assigned to the case, but it's late. Hayato explains that apologizing is a waste of time and assigns her to tail Tokusada. He wonders if she knows something about him and Shion reveals she knows only his name and rumors. Hayato then shows her a video of Tokusada defeating Koga Ninja, where the camera could only capture his after images as he is too fast. He tells Shion to assume all the rumors she heard about him being true. Meanwhile, Tokusada visits Gantetsu Suzunon. Kamenami tells the students that in two days they will have a written test on how ninja tools work. As that's a hard subject for Itoki, he goes to Ryoko and asks her to help him study. Kosetsu and Kurai show up and Kurai explains that a ninja tool exam is about using ninja tools to steal the test answers. The day before the exam, the teacher hides the answers, and they need to get them. But if the teacher catches them, they fail. Itoki relaxes that he doesn't need to study, and they all agree to work together to obtain a copy of the answers. Ryoko helps Itoki maintenance his ninja gear. He wonders if she wants to be a ninja tool craftsman. She confirms, but states things aren't that easy. Her father is the leader of Sega Village, but he has always told her he won't let her succeed his position and wants her to live her life like a girl. She barely made him agree that she attends the academy, but after that, he wants her to cut ties with the ninja world. Takasada and Gantetsu are drinking together. Gantetsu shows him a ninja toy, wanting Takasada to buy it, but Takasada explains that Aiga doesn't have money, and you should try selling it to Koga, since they also buy their tools. Gantetsu then reveals that Koga recently decided to shift their ninja tool orders to factories overseas. But if Sega lowers their prices to match the overseas ones, they may continue purchasing from them. Enbei Takamin also showed Gantetsu blueprints of something they want Sega to make, which surprised Gantetsu and he can't reveal what it was. Gantetsu states that if they take the job, the whole village will be busy, but they will essentially become Koga slaves. But if they don't, then they are finished. Two other students also decide to join Itoki's group in the evening. They go to try to take the answers from Kamenami. Ryoko gives the shuriken-like drone to Itoki, who locates the safe and its key. But as he withdraws the drone, he hits the doorframe and Kamenami hears them. They quickly hide and Kurei decides to act as a decoy and draws away Kamenami, while the rest try and get the answers. Meanwhile, Takasada also decides to infiltrate the Koga and find what the blueprints were for. He sees the cameras also see in thermal and uses shuriken drones to block the cameras for a moment as he passes so they don't notice him. Itoki and the rest search for the key, but realize that Kamenami had taken it with her. Kurei runs with the two other students but decides to split, however as they do, Himura and two other Koga find him and knock him out. Kosetsu decides to go look for Himura, while Ryoko states she will use her lock opening tool. Ryoko unlocks the safe and they get the answers. Kozetsu faces Himura, but the Koga decide to leave. Tokusada looks for the blueprints, but is unable to find them. He is aware that Shion is tailing him as she managed to sneak in the air duct. He uses the ninja toy to reveal her, and the guards starts chasing her and makes an easy escape himself. Shion reports to Hayato that she failed to track Tokusada, but wishes to continue, and Hayato agrees. 
Shion explains that the security was too tight to be just a food factory, but she has no evidence to support that. Kamanami starts the test. Itoki and Karai look at it and realize it's totally different than what they got. Himura is laughing as he knew they won't figure out that he switched the answers before they got them. Yoko still manages to solve the exam problems as she is a tool craftsman. MB is angry at his secretary as not only did a ninja sneak in last night, but she also did something he didn't instruct her. She explains that an instruction memo was on her computer, where MB usually puts his instructions. She gives the memo to MB and he reads that she needs to order ninja toys from Sega, 10,000 units and pay immediately. Enbai calls Gantetsu about the mistaken order, but Gantetsu explains they have already started production. Tokusada visits Gantetsu and asks him to improve his lock opening tool as it's an old model. Gantetsu states that old men tend to talk to themselves and then shares that Kino visited him several years ago and wanted a ninja core that could hold far more energy than the best known ninja core. Gantetsu sent him away as he told him even they can't make it. Tokusada returns to Yumika and tells her from the intel he got from Gantetsu. He believes that Koga's aim is the secret ninja core passed down in Aiga. Riha is surprised and wonders if the secret Aiga ninja core do really exist. According to the stories, it was made during the war, but afterwards sealed away by the Aiga chief as it's too powerful and dangerous in human hands. Yumika confirms its existence, but states its location is passed only to the Aiga chief. Koza wonders why they need it, and Yumika believes that Kova are trying to start a war. Itoki's group are cleaning as a penalty for failing the test. Kozetsu approaches Itoki and tells him that there is a traitor among them as it was likely Koba switched the answers, and someone must have told Koba which safe they are going after. Genji tells Hayato that they can't prosecute Kido for the attempted assassination of Iga's successor as the culprit committed suicide. Hayato then receives Satomi's autopsy results. Hayato reads that a chip was found in her brain, but its purpose is unknown. Sometime before Kishimaru's death, he tells Suzuku that he wishes to create a world without ninjas. Since ninjas exist to protect the peace in secret, a world without ninjas would mean that the world is truly at peace. Suzuku, liking the dream, wants to help out. Kamanami tells the students that the end of term exam is next week, and it will be a practical exam conducted jointly with all classes. She explains that the exam is dangerous and each year there are injuries, and in the worst case, they even have fatal accidents. After class, Kosetsu is sure that Koga will make a move during the exam. Karai tells Itoki since he skipped the last exam, if he skips this one too, he may get expelled. Hayato tells Shion that Koga always had the greatest power and had expanded its power by swallowing up other villages by putting financial pressure on them. Kishimaru changed it all as he aimed to walk the path of peace with the rest of the villages. He was a great ninja who was admired not only by the Koga ninja, but for some reason he was killed. Koga now has a great grudge against Aiga, and they need to uncover the truth and resolve the situation as quickly as possible since an all-out war is coming. At Koga meeting, Kido allows MB he used some force to resolve the situation with Sega as they need them. After that, he tells Hausen to stay as he wished to speak with him alone. Kido wonders if MB had talked with Suzaku, and explains that he is a top student who even ranks alongside Kishimaru, while Kido himself couldn't even get in the academy. Kido shares that his condition is frail, and he could die any moment, so he is always thinking on who could succeed him as Koka chief and believes that Suzaku is a fine candidate. Karai wants to prepare for the exam and starts a meeting with the members of the old dorm, but Itoki decides to leave to not drag them into his problems. Ryoko gives him a prototype of Sega's latest disguise ninja tool. She explains that when used with a ninja suit, it can disguise your whole body and even your voice. Kosetsu informs Itoki that she will take down Suzaku during the exam. Itoki is against it as she may get killed. She insists that this is the life of a ninja, but that only angers Itoki, who leaves for a walk. While outside, Itoki meets Juzen, who invites him for tea and manju. Itoki wonders if ninjas are killers and explains that his father was killed because he was a ninja and he was told that Aiga killed Koga's chief, so they are after Itoki's life now. Juzen tells him that a peaceful world without war, crime, or killing is a fairy tale, but it's too precious to give up, which is why the ninja do dirty work in the shadows to protect the fairy tale called peace. Juzen also reveals that Itoki isn't the first student to ask him such a question. Kishimaru Minob and Haitoki Sakuraba had asked him the same. After listening to Juzen, they both told him that this is not what they want to be. Itoki then finishes his tea, thanks Juzen, and leaves. Kumsetsu tells Itoki that the exam will require the student to take the ninja core of another and decides to train with Itoki. After some training, she tells Itoki that she plans on attacking Suzaku right away and that Itoki should stay hidden until he can get a ninja core from someone and then again remain hidden until the end of the exam. She then throws the plant in the bin, but someone takes it out after her. 
Later, Suzaku having obtained the plan, shares his plan on killing Itoki. The Koba doesn't agree at first, but Suzaku tells them to prove themselves that they are superior, which makes them shut up. As the exam starts, the Koga heads to where Itoki should be. However, as they enter the room he is, they get into a trap and get knocked out. Kosetsu and Itoki then thank the traitor as they knew he would give Koba their plan and use him. The student reveals he didn't have a choice as they threatened to crush his village if he didn't obey. Kogzetsu goes to face Suzaku. Meanwhile, the traitor informs Himura that he has eyes on Itoki. When Himura comes, the traitor points at where Itoki is. However, the traitor is Itoki using the disguised prototype, but he fails to surprise Himura. Himura then reveals he is also using a disguise and is in reality Suzaku. Meanwhile, the Suzaku which Kosetsu faces reveals that he is Himura disguised as Suzaku. Kosetsu is then attacked by another Koga. Himura reveals that Suzaku's plan worked and that Suzaku believes they can't defeat Kosetsu even if they all attack her, however, they are prepared to die. Himura then presses a button and causes an explosion. Hearing the explosion, Kamanami heads towards it. Itoki is barely running away from Suzaku, who manages to injure him a few times. He manages to catch up to Itoki and attacks him, but Itoki refuses to die, stating that currently Suzaku is the killer, and if he dies the circle of revenge will keep repeating and more people will die. Managing to escape him again, Itoki throws a smokescreen at Suzaku and surprise attacks him, breaking his core. He tells Suzaku that he doesn't like him, but doesn't want him to become a killer, and then collapses. Itoki wakes up in bed surrounded by Kosetsu, Ryoko, and Kurei, seeing he's okay. Kosetsu then falls asleep. The girls explain that Kosetsu said she will kill all of Koga if something were to happen to Itoki and never left his side, even though she was in bad shape too. Himura and the rest of the Koga are also hospitalized and Himura is angry at Suzaku for not killing Itoki. She entails Tokusada, who leads her to a secret facility. Following the air ducts, she sees some scientists looking at Kishinmaru and other chambers with other body parts. Tokusada then shows up in front of her and they leave the facility. Shion is surprised that he knew she tailed him, but then wonders why he showed her this. Takasada tells her to do her job herself. Kari visits Suzaku, saying that a lot of students from her dorm had stopped coming to school and if he is the reason. Seeing his expression, she asks him to spare her. Suzaku tells her that there are still things she needs to do. Kari agrees to do anything he wants, calling Suzaku master. Kari and Ryoko are invited to spend the summer break at the Aiga. Yumiko welcomes them, but it's sorry to hear what happened with Sega. Earlier, Tokusada speaks with Gantetsu, who explains that their machinery caught fire at night or at least Koga made it look like that. As this would be the end of Sega, they have no choice but to accept Koga's offer, however Gantetsu will forget what they did. While Itoki visits his father's grave, Karei and Ryoko look around. Karei then sends a message to Suzaku that she infiltrated Aiga and will be giving him soon more intel. Suzaku then tells his father that he wants to be in the front line for the mass assault on Aiga. Housen states that it is still just a proposal but reminds Suzaku that he wanted to protect Kishimura's ideals of a peaceful world. Because of that, he also held back at the exam. But Suzaku states he only developed doubts trying to calm himself and from now on he will listen to his rage. Shailen reports to Hayato that Koga are trying to develop something with Kishimura's body. Hayato also gets informed that there are talks at Koga about attacking Aiga. Shion proposes that they should be investigating Koga. But Hayato dismisses it as it's still just rumors and Shailen should continue investigating Tokusada. On their way to the cemetery, Yumika decides to stop the hospital first. They meet Ria there, who explains to Itoki that her husband has been in calm since a mission from five years ago. At the cemetery, Itoki tells Yumiko what the principal told him about his father. Yumiko adds that his father was accepting and welcoming all ninjas, no matter from what village they were. She reveals that his father died while he was on a mission with Tokusada and that Tokusada still blames himself for that. Yumika reveals that she also had sent many people on dangerous missions, and it was she who sent Ria's husband on a mission. Ninjas sometimes need to bear sins that will never be erased. Itoki takes the girls with him while he goes to do an errand. He is surprised to learn that everyone at the market is ninja and knows that she is studying to become one. An old lady gives him a note, which asks him to catch 100 lively sweet fish. While fishing, Kurei comes and asks him which swimsuit he likes the most among the girls, but looking at them, Itoki decides to not answer. Ryoko proposes to help him catch fish with ninja tools and shows him two types of bombs, but Itoki declines, stating they will blow up the fish in pieces. Kozetsu goes and catches a fish with her bare hands. Seeing that, Karai proposes they have a contest on who can catch more. While they catch fish, Itoki states that Karai is quite good at it. She explains her technique that she throws a decoy sweetfish to another sweetfish territory, and as they hate the decoy, they get caught. 
She feels like she is describing herself and explains that her family is freelance ninjas and she doesn't have a village. While saying this, Karai recalls her past and teachings at Fuma Village, where she was taught to hide behind an act and never trust anyone. Itoki thanks Karei and explains that he didn't know anything about ninja or their existence, and when he started school, she helped him. After they caught the fish, Riha and Kozo thank them and explain that on this day each year, all the ninjas in the village gather to celebrate the past Aiga chief. Itoki and the rest join the people and help prepare for tonight. Takasada comes and tells Itoki that this all started as a way to cheer up Yumika, but has grown into a huge event. He explains that Kozetsu was abandoned and Yumika took her and raised her, which is why Kosetsu is ready to do anything for her. Takasada also says that most of the people are indebted to Yumika in a way and then disappears after taking some fish without Itoki realizing. Tokasada then goes to the wall and offers some fish to Shion, who was using camouflage and wonders if she is that bad at this. Tokasada states that from his perspective, everyone is bad at it. Shion then wonders if his people really killed Kishinmaru, but he wonders what kind of an investigator would come and ask that. The feast starts and the people are happy that Itoki is finally with them. They tell him that without Yumika, the village would have fallen apart when his father died. Years ago, Tokusada is angry at Haitoki's death and wants revenge. Most of the people are against him as that will just spark a war. As a fight was about to start, Yumika stops them and slaps Tokusada, saying that when people lose what they protect, they lose their way. She tells him that he doesn't need revenge, but to remember what he should protect. He adds that Haitoki loved the village and tried doing everything for it and if he died to protect idiots who would turn against each other. They need to endure and carry the will of Haitoki. Itoki tells his mother that he needs to strengthen his resolve, but he can see Aiga is a good place. Yumika then calls him elsewhere, as she wants to discuss something. Karai tries following them, but Kozo stops her and wants to know about Itoki's school life. Hearing he is good, Kozo explains that he was worried as Itoki had to give up his old life and part with his friends. He is happy to learn he is smiling again, as being born as the son of the chief, he had too much on his shoulders. Kozo adds that Itoki told him that he is enjoying school thanks to Ryoko and Karei, and he considers them as dear friends. Karei later reports to Sumeru that there was nothing to report. Genji asks Shion where Hayato is and she explains that he is on a solo mission today. Genji then asks her if ever thought of his actions being suspicious, but Shion doesn't understand what he means. Meanwhile, Hayato is speaking with Juzen and wants the academy to be sealed off. He also plans on calling all ninjas and convene a ninja grand council. Yumika decides to tell Itoki about Aiga's secret ninja core. It's sealed away and only the Aiga chiefs know its location. Once his name is added to the registry scroll of the Aiga ninjas, he will be a true Aiga ninja. The summer break is almost over and while with the girls, Itoki wonders when you start feeling like a ninja. Kosetsu states that one day, you just realize you are. Kozo comes and informs Itoki that the academy is temporarily closing due to large absence by students. They receive news that there will be a ninja grand council, which can only be convened on command of the head of the NSC. The leaders of all prominent villages are called to form a high council of 13 ninja clan heads and decide the future of all ninjas in Japan. It's been 70 years since the last council. Hayato informs the NSC members about the upcoming council, and that they should be more vigilant due to all village heads gathering at one place. Shion feels she is being led by the nose as Hayato didn't share his plans with them. She joined NSC to do the right things, but now she can't even say what is right. Hayato tells her to focus on her tasks until she figures out what is right. The Aiga Ninja represented by Yumika and accompanied by Kozo and Tokusada are the last to arrive at the council meeting. Hayato starts the meeting, but Kozo sees that there is no one from Sega. Hausen then explains that Sega is now under the umbrella of Koga, and thus Sega had withdrawn from the meeting and will follow all Koga in all decisions. Kozo also sees that Tameo from Bizen isn't there, but Seiman Katori. Hausen also shares that the Fuma are also under their umbrella. Kisuke Nakuru explains that their Fuma chief can't be there, so he is here as his proxy. Yachio Makizuki laughs, stating that Kisuke is the leader and they have been doing this for 500 years. Hayata decides to start right on the point and reveals that peace is threatened by Koga. Kuroda Dazai laughs, thinking it's due to things between Koga and Aiga, but Hayato explains that Koga's actions affect the whole country. He explains that it started with Sega becoming their subsidiary, and that there are no records of any Sega working at any of Koga Holdings' officially registered facilities. Instead, most of the Sega members had suddenly vanished. There are also frequent cases of small-scale villages which are never heard from again. At Ninja Academy, the voluntary withdrawals far exceed the normal numbers. As Koga denies all this, Hayato wants to hear from the council members if Koga had acted against their village. 
Everyone denies any problems, including some that seem hesitant to say it. Yumika states she still hasn't talked. She denies any allegation of Aiga being responsible for Kishimura's death. Additionally, she provides photo evidence that Koga is developing a new ninja tool weapon, and that they are targeting Aiga's secret ninja core. Yuika states they are using a fake vengeance as a pretext to invade Aiga, however, Aiga is prepared to destroy its secret ninja core. Other asks if she is sure about it, but Yumika explains that the core was used to achieve peace, however, if it's the reason to ignite another war, they will destroy it to prevent it. Kisu doesn't believe her and thinks she is trying to fool them as steal, scheme, kill, sneak our shinobi's true desire. Yumika states, those are way of the past. They are not in the ninja glory days and don't need military might or scheming, but to protect the people's harmony. Seven from Bizen then stands and states they have experienced Koga aggression. The Kusunoki house has been scattered and the small branch family villages have fallen. They could no longer fight, and his grandmother took her own life, seeing the steady collapse of the village. Eburo from Hachia explains that they make their livings through entertainment. But it's a fickle industry and Koga use unreliability and fragility against them. As a result, Iboro alone is supporting the entire village. One by one, the majority of the members stand up and say they have experienced Koga aggression. Hayato then states that the village chief must take responsibility and decides to arrest Kido on suspicion of violating the ninja ordinances. Kido willingly accepts the arrest. Hausen asks Hayato if they found the murderer of Kishinmaru, but Hayato explains they are still investigating. Genji then enters stating they found evidence that Kishimaru was killed by Aiga. He proceeds to explain that due to jamming they didn't have the security footage. However, they managed to extract fragments. He shows a blurry video but explains that it managed to record audio as well and that each village ninja cores have specific frequencies and wavelength and the audio matches Aiga's core. Genji then wants to arrest Yumika, and she also decides to come willingly while stating they haven't done anything wrong and will prove their innocence. Before leaving, she tells Tokusada to tell Itoki to take care of Aiga. Later, Kozo and Takisada tell everyone what happened. Itoki then requests that they gather all Aiga members. Meanwhile, NB speaks in front of the Koga ninja that the Aiga ninja was arrested for her actions against Kishimaru. As this is an action of war against them, NB wants Koga to mobilize and annihilate the village of Aiga. Hayato tells his team that they will be handling the interrogation of Aiga and Koga leaders as he has a different task. Shion complains about Hayato not trusting them again, but he tells them to act on their own justice. Later, Hayato watches the blurry video that Genji provided and wonders why he kept it for so long before showing it. He then notices something on the video, but gets stabbed from behind by Genji, using Koga's latest ninja suit model. All Aiga members had gathered. Itoki explains that due to the situation, they need to choose a new acting chief and proposes himself. Everyone accepts, although Itoki notes it's just until his mother returns. Meanwhile, Genji goes to Yumika and tells her that he sentences her to death. While in his cell, Kido recalls how he was born sick and had to go many experiments and surgeries to make him be able to be ninja chief. At one point, he started waking up thinking that if there were no ninjas, he wouldn't have to suffer this much. At NSC meeting, Genji states it's been 72 hours since Hayato disappeared and he is taking all authority as head of NSC. Shion states that Hayato is on a solo mission, but Genji states his division too will be looking for him. Genji then announces that Kaido will be released, while Yumika is found guilty and will be executed. He then assigns Shion as captain of Division 1 to be Hayato's successor. Shion tells Division 1 that she believes Genji is involved in Hayato's disappearance. His team stops her and tells her that she needs to be cool-headed as she is the captain now. Shion states she is the most unfit to be captain, which is why Genji chose her. Division 1 then decides to investigate Hayato's disappearance. Genji brings Kaido to Yumika, stating that Kaido wants to propose a deal which Genji determined to be beneficial to NSC and ninjas as a whole. Yumika guesses he proposed that she gives them the secret ninja core, but she denies. Kido adds that the secret core is the progenitor of ninja cores as well as limitless energy source. If they combine it with modern technology, it will bring great developments for ninjas. Genji informs Yumika that her sentence will be carried tomorrow, so she has time to think until then. Takasada receives a letter informing him about Yumika's upcoming execution and he gathers all Aiga to announce it. Some of the people want to go fight NSC to free Yumika, but Kozo explains that if they do, they will be making everyone their enemies and it will be the end of Aiga. Takasada asks Itoki to expel him from the Aiga, so that he can go and save Yumika. As Itoki hesitates to say it, Kosetsu jumps and pulls out her blade at Itoki, asking him to expel her too, so that she can go and save Yumika as well. Itoki thanks her and states that he won't expel them, and they will all save her as Aiga ninjas. He tells them to prepare, but when times come, 
they should avoid as much as possible hurting others. He tells the rest to gather information to prove Yumika's innocence. Speaking with Enbi and Hausen, Kido tells them to gather the executives for a meeting. Suzaku then comes and reports that his spy, Kurei, informed him that Tokusada had left the Aiga village to save Yumika. As Tokusada isn't in Aiga, Suzaku believes now is the best chance to attack Aiga. Suzaku requests that he be included in a frontline unit. Kido accepts, while Hausen is against it. Later, at the meeting, Enbi states that they have deployed more Asura squads than anticipated, and with the Kobe units, they will be having around 10 times the strength of Aiga. They also track Tokusada, who seems to indeed not be an Aiga. Hausen opposes the attack of Aiga, and several executives agree with him. Hausen states that Ashura are not yet complete, and while he approves some small fightings that would benefit Koga, exposing Koga to danger now will only badly affect Koga's future. Hausen asks Kido to reconsider, and Kido agrees with him, but then shoots Hausen. He states that Hausen is always right and probably is right now too, but Koga has no place for cowards. At Aiga, they receive news of gas leaks. Koza runs to Atoki and explains that this must be Koga's doing, and they are preparing a large-scale attack on Aiga. At the Aiga checkpoint, the guard, Shai, sees the incoming Koga vehicles. He activates the defense system and opens fire on them. He hits several vehicles, but the Azura units are unharmed and jump at the checkpoint. The guard then states he is happy to die Shinobi's death and blows the whole checkpoint. Rhea states that took out 21% of the detected Koga forces. Azure units then reach the village where Aiga ninjas start fighting them. Meanwhile, Tokusada and Kozetsu infiltrate NSC and free Yumika. On their way out, they are stopped by Genji and his men. A man contacts Suzaku and tells him that Kido killed his father. He warns Suzaku that he is in danger too, but he then gets killed and the call cuts off. Kozo and Ria tell Itoki that the enemy Koga ninjas are accompanied by ninja robots and their numbers are about 250, while Aiga has 48 frontline ninjas. Elsewhere, Takasada tells Kozetsu to take Yumika and run while he remains to face Genji and his squad. Itoki wonders why Kova aren't directly attacking them but remains cautious. He asks the Aiga ninja to report anything they notice about the mechanical ninjas and Ryoko asks if they can bring her one mechanical ninja so she can examine it. At Koga meeting, they report to Kido that about 29% of the Azura units have been destroyed, but there are no human casualties and they will likely suppress Aiga within an hour. Soon manages to bring a mechanical ninja to Itoki and Ryoko starts inspecting it. She quickly determines that the energy the ninja core provides is too low and expects the mechanical ninjas to be able to operate for max an hour. Shiota then reports that a mechanical ninja was about to kill him, but suddenly retreated and another mechanical ninja attacked him. Itoki then guesses if the insufficient energy is the mechanical ninja's problem, then that explains why Koba is after Aiga's secret ninja core. Ryoko guesses that based on Shiota's report, the mechanical ninjas are rotating and some go to be recharged, while others fight. Since that base needs to be big and transported by truck, Ria pinpoints five potential locations for the base. However, they are unable to send anyone to scout the locations. Itoki then decides to go there himself and Ryoko decides to go with him. Karai states she doesn't think she will be useful and prefers staying out of it and Itoki is fine it, stating they will play by the river again when this is over. Karai then goes to report to Suzaku, but is torn apart if she should send the report or not. Takasada had defeated all of Genji's men. Shion shows up and Genji notes she is late and orders her to capture Tokusada. Shion, however, states that Genji is under arrest. She calls him a traitor and explains they arrested Koba ninjas attempting to burn Hayato Goshogawara's body at NSC on cremation facility. Shion states that Genji is the main suspect for Hayato's murder. Takasada then gets behind Genji and strangles him. As he leaves, Shion orders her men to leave him, since their priority is getting aid for the NSC agents and getting things under control. At Koga, they learn about Genji's arrest and Tokusada heading back to Aiga. MB is annoyed and states an hour has passed, but the men tell him that by the morning, they should suppress Aiga. MB states that's too long and tells them to go all out and finish the attack in 30 minutes. Meanwhile, Kosetsu and Takasada learn of the attack on Aiga. As Yumiko wants to return to the village, Kosetsu agrees to sneak her in. Itoki and Ryoko find the recharging base. As a larger group moves out, Itoki sees their chance to destroy the base. Ryoko takes out some grenades but states they need to be placed directly on the charging system. She explains she will be able to jam the signal and neutralize the mechanical ninjas for about 10 seconds. They start their attack and Ryoko temporarily neutralizes the mechanical ninjas. Itoki runs towards the charging system, but Himura stops him. Ryoko attacks Himura from behind, which gives Itoki a second chance. However, as he runs, the mechanical ninjas reactivate and capture him along with Ryoko. 
One of the mechanical ninjas takes the grenades from Itoki, but then runs and places them on the charging system. Itoki then activates the grenades and causes a large explosion. As the smoke clears, Ryoko wakes up Itoki and wants them to leave, but he heads towards the mechanical ninja that helped him and sees it was Karai in disguise. Kobe learns of the loss of the charging station, but doesn't believe they can defeat Aiga without the Azura units and decides to retreat. Shem questions Genji if he killed Hayato on Koba's orders. He prefers staying quiet and waiting for his lawyer. Shion guesses it's Koba's lawyer, but states they are not going to defend him. She explains that the Koba who attempted to burn Hayato's body, stated that Genji killed Hayato, and they only took the job to burn the body and have no connection to Koga. Shion is annoyed that Genji still wished to serve Koga even after they abandoned him and then tells him that if he is truly NSC, then he should do what's necessary to serve justice. Annoyed, Genji states this isn't over, and as Shion leaves, he performs a jutsu. Yunika and Kozetsu return to Aiga and meet up with Kozo and Ria. Genji's jutsu then activates, and he takes control over Kosetsu and points Kozetsu's blade at Yumika, stating that if they don't give her the secret ninja core, she will kill Yumika. Yumika takes off Kozetsu's mask, seeing her biting her lips, and states she can see how hard she is fighting, and no matter what happens, she will always be her daughter. Kozetsu tries fighting the control and ends up collapsing on the ground. Yumika then sits next to her and hugs her, but is then stabbed. Itoki and then Rest arrive, only to find Yumika's body in a pool of blood and Kosetsu standing next to her with a bloody kunai. Kogan attacks various ninja villages including Aiboros, Kurodo Dezais, Yachio, Mokshizukis, and Salmon Katoris. Ria tells Itoki that since Yumika had passed away, they need to complete the procedures and make Itoki officially chief of Aiga. Takasada is holding and interrogating Kosetsu. But it's almost certain that she will be blamed for Yumika's death and Itoki will need to decide on what to do with Kosetsu. Itoki then recalls how they tried helping Yumika, but couldn't save her. At Koga meeting, Enbi states that the annihilation of Hachiya Troop, Bizen, and Kurohabaki is complete. Enbi states they will recall the dispatched units from those areas and prepare a second assault on Aiga. Kido tells Enbi and his followers that they failed once, and this is their last chance. Suzaku is advised to not return to Koga as Kido intends to kill anyone who doesn't conform to his vision. Suzaku wonders why his father was killed, and the man tells him it's because he suggested abandoning the plans for armed suppression. Suzaku states that sacrifices are expected, but they need to take revenge for Kishimura's death. The man tells Suzaku that his father tried to protect the village and Suzaku's future, and was no coward. Before leaving, he tells Suzaku to stay hidden so he doesn't die as well. Itoki becomes the official 19th chief of Aiga. Some of the Aiga wonder what will be Iga's action now, suggesting that they avenge Yumika and execute Kozetsu and noting that Koga is currently attacking other villages and will soon attack Aiga again. Ria adds that since Koga and currently spread its forces all over the country, this may be Iga's only chance to attack. Itoki wants to make the decision after his mother's funeral. A bit later, Ryoko informs Itoki that her father contacted her and she will be going back home. She explains he got absorbed in his work and forgot to check his phone that right now he is in the hospital. Karai suggested that she go home too. Ryoko still wishes to visit Yumika's funeral and wonders about Karai, but Karai isn't sure she will be able to. Shion visits Tokisada and requests his assistant to bring Koga to justice. She explains that Genji is in confinement and NSC founder Juzen Jurebo is serving as provisional head of the organization. Shion gives Tokisada reports from Genji's connection with Koga and data from his register. Kozetsu is listed in that register and Shion wonders what her relationship to Koba is. When Ryoko and Kurei leave, Takasada takes Itoki to see Kozetsu. Takasada explains he had to tie her up so that she doesn't kill herself. He asks her to tell them again what happened. Kozetsu then explains that a bell rang in her head and from there she only remembers small fragments, but in the end she found herself covered in blood. As she cries, she asks them to kill her, stating she no longer has a reason to live. Takasada explains he figured out what happened to her. He reveals that Koba was developing technology to control others with a microchip implanted in the brain. Satomi Tsubaki, who tried to kill Itoki, also had a chip in her brain. Itoki wonders why would Kozetsu has a chip and Tokisada states that Kaida was implanting chips in children he had with mistresses and sending them to other villages, creating unwitting spies. Takasada tells Kozetsu that Kido is her father. The news shock her. But she then asked him since how long he knew that, as he probably investigated her before. Takasada explains that he didn't know about the chips as Genji had hidden that information within the NSC. Kozetsu states that just knowing she was Keo's daughter, they should have thrown her out of the village, but Takasada asks her if Yumika will ever do such thing. Takasada recalls the time when he told Yumika who Kozetsu's father was. 
He explained that her mother is dead, and they should put her in an orphanage. But Yumika decided to keep her and names her Kosetsu, written as Red Snow. Itoki states that Kosetsu was controlled, and it's not her fault, but Kosetsu disagrees, stating it's her fault as she killed Yumika. Tokusada states that he was watching Kosetsu as she grew up and taught her ninjutsu. If she had killed Yumika, her wound would have been different. Kosetsu was resisting the brainwashing and tried protecting Yumika until the end. Tokusada then notes that the traitor is someone else. Kido speaks with the Aiga traitor and asks him if he killed Yumika. The traitor confirms as Yumika refused to reveal the secret core's location and Kozetsu's brainwashing wore off. The traitor explains that Itoki is now the chief, but Aiga is in confusion and Itoki failed to take command. Kido tells him to do nothing else and continue sending reports. Karai returns to Kisuke Ninakuru and starts giving her report for infiltrating Aiga, but Kisuke stops her and other ninjas surround her. He tells her that being friend or foe no longer matters to Koga, and he will ensure the Fuma line surviving. Karai can't believe her father sold her out, but Kisuke gives her a kunai and activates a secret trap door and takes Karai out of the house. Kisuke then pulls out bombs, stating that Fuma will survive and blows himself up, taking the Koga ninja with him. Ryoko visits her father in the hospital. She notices that Gantetsu is missing his right arm, and he explains that they made them work a bit hard, and as he complained, they decided to use him as an example and cut his arm. At Yumika's funeral, Itoki wants to stay a bit longer with Yumika. Suzuku then comes and pays his respect to Yumika. He asks him how it feels to have your parent killed. Itoki is angry but remains silent and Suzuku calls him a coward. Itoki then attacks him and states that it's obvious that he is devastated but wonders what's so good about vengeance and would it make him feel better. Itoki wonders what Koba tries to accomplish but Suzaku states he doesn't know and that his father was killed for opposing Kido and is sure that his father isn't wrong. Itoki asks him why he then continues to fight and Suzaku explains it's all he has now. Suzaku goes home and looks at a picture frame with his father. He feels something and checks behind the picture and finds a flashcard. On it, he sees security recordings of Kishimaru and Kido talking. Kishimaru wonders why Kido made something so dreadful and notes that his path leads to destruction and ruin. Kido states his ideal is the same as Kishimaru's, a world at peace with no ninjas. Kido wants to kill all ninjas and rule the country from the shadows with the Azuras. Kishimaru tells him that there is still time to stop, but Kido states he doesn't understand him. Kishimaru was blessed and loved, but Kido was only given pain. A ninja then comes and kills Kishimaru from behind, with Kido noting that he will be the last ninja. Suzuku is shocked to see in him the footage. Kozo gives Itoki a letter from Kido who wants the secret core and vacates Aiga without condition. As Kozo considers this a declaration of war, he wants Itoki to take action, but Itoki doesn't yet want to make a decision that will lead to many deaths. Itoki visits his mother's altar and speaks to her, wondering if they would have ever had a normal life as they once talked about it. He tells her that he wants to protect the things she wants to protect, but also there are other things he wants to protect. He had made up his mind and intended to do things his own way. Itoki then turns towards Tokusada and asks him to help him accomplish this. Itoki gathers the Aiga ninja and tells them that he decided to give the secret ninja core to Kido in exchange for Aiga's autonomy. The Aiga is against it and don't believe that Koga will keep their word. However, Itoki states he won't be changing his decision and Tokusada states he is on his side. Itoki states that if Koda attacks them with all their might, they won't be able to withstand it. That's why the Aiga suggests they attack Koga now while their forces are scattered. Itoki still refuses and states that if they don't agree with his decision, he will expel them from the village. At NSC meeting, Juzen reveals that they are reconciling with Koga per Aiga chief's request, and NSC will serve as witness of the peace treaty. Ria can't believe as Koga are not even hiding their crimes anymore, but Juzen states there is no evidence, and the ninjas from the destroyed villages are either nearly all dead or missing, and Koga's only established crime right now is its assault on Aiga. Juzen explains that NSC's job is to maintain the peace, and once Koga receives the secret core, they need to monitor them to not use it for military purposes. Enbei is annoyed that NSC will be monitoring them and forbids them from using the core for military purpose, and wishes they refuse the offer. Kido states they can't start a fight with NSC right now, but also can't accept the terms. Kido intends to obtain the core before replying to NSC and tells them to prepare a second assault on Aiga. Rina visits Aiga and informs Itoki that Koga isn't replying back. Kari visits Sega Village looking for Ryoko, but finds the village burned down. She sees a light from a basement and finds Ryoko working on a ninja tool. Kagura reveals that her father died, but she didn't feel sad. He trained her to lie and betray to ensure the village's survival, but in the end, he was betrayed by Koga and died. 
Karai is a Fuma ninja and felt free as she no longer needed to pass intel from Aiga to Koga. Karai states Yumika's death and what happened to Aiga is her fault as she reported that Tokusada wasn't in the village. Even if it's true and she betrayed them, Ryoko states that she is still her dear friend and she believes the time they spent was real, and she is no longer lying to her. Suzuku calls Kaido and reveals he found footage that his father was hiding. Kido realizes what he means and wonders if he showed it to someone else, but Suzuku denies it. Suzuku wants to give it to Kido as proof of his loyalty and wishes Kido to grant him a place to die as a Koga ninja. Kido tells him that he will send someone to pick him up and he then will join the second Aiga assault teams. Kozo and the other Aiga speak with Itoki. Kozo explains that the Aiga ninja reach a consensus. They don't want Aiga to give the secret core to Koga and won't accept expulsion, instead they want Itoki to renounce his authority as chief. They won't be choosing a new chief and will be protecting Aiga together. Itoki refuses to leave his position and warns them that if they continue their opposition, he will expel them. Meanwhile, the Kobe unit arrives at Suzaku's location to take him out. He defeats them all and learns when the Aiga assault will happen. Kurei visits Aiga and wishes to speak with Itoki, but Takasada stops her. She asks him to tell Itoki that she is sorry for lying and betraying him, but Takasada already knows that she was passing intel using her bird. Karai blames herself for Yumika's death, but Tokusada states that while she created one of the factors that cornered Aiga, there is still a true traitor out there. Even so, Aiga owes her, as she was the one that blew up the charging stations. As Tokusada leaves the villager for a mission, Kozo and other Aiga decide to take down Itoki and retrieve the secret core. The Aiga trader informs Kato of Kozo's actions and Kido tells him to obtain the core before Kozo. The trader Riha enters the room first and Kozo comes after her. Wondering why she is there as he gave her an order to wait for him. Kozo recalls Itoki and Takasada telling him that Kozetsu didn't kill Yumika, but a traitor did it. Itoki prioritized revealing the traitor above all else and acted like he would expel everyone. Kozo wondered why they trusted him and Itoki revealed that everyone else trusted Kozo, and if Kozo was the traitor, then Itoki could not trust anyone. Kozo asked Riha why she did it. Riha wonders why he is still serving Aiga considering how weak and poor they are and how Aiga didn't provide him with anything. Kido had promised Rhea to save her husband. Rhea then takes a drug to kill herself. While other Aiga are trying to save her, Kozo finds letters from Itoki, who apologizes for deceiving Aiga and testing them, but he needed to find the traitor. He wanted to make peace reality but now knows that it is impossible. Takasada investigated House and Ban's death and realizes Kido's objective is to exterminate all ninjas. Suzuku had given Tokusada the video footage, Itoki guesses that by the time Kozo was reading the letters, Koga had surrounded Aiga and asked the Aiga ninja to run away and not fight them. As long as Aiga ninja are alive, they can continue on. Earlier, Tokusada found out that most mechanical ninjas are moved and likely there is an upcoming attack on Aiga. Seeing there is no other choice, Itoki asks Tokusada to find when the attack will happen and during that time, Koga's defense would be weaker and he will go speak with Kido. Tokusada states their defense will still be strong but Itoki intends to use the secret ninja core. After finishing the letter, Itoki dresses up and heads towards Koga. Kozo finishes reading the letter and checks their ninja register only to see that Itoki had removed his name, along with Tokusada's and Kozetsu's. Kozo decides that they stay and fight the Koga in order to protect Itoki's plan. Takasada and Kozetsu follow Itoki to Koga. He orders them to turn back, but Tokusada and Kozetsu refuse with Tokusada stating he cut ties with Aiga and he is no longer their chief. Earlier, Itoki tells Kozetsu that Yumika told him that her greatest joy comes from what her kids do with their lives. He states that Yumika is watching Kozetsu now and wonders if that is enough of a reason for Kozetsu to live. As Itoki leaves, Tokusada tells Kozetsu that Kobuto will be attacking and Itoki's orders were to help the Aiga people escape, while Itoki plans on going to Kobuto alone. He gives Kozetsu a taser stating that she can break the chip with it, but there is a risk of breaking herself before that. Tokusada then tells her that he wants to help Itoki. Kozetsu then takes the taser. At present, Kozetsu tells Itoki that she's going to Koga because she wants to do that. At Koga, Enbei tells Kido that the second assault on Aiga will start at midnight, and they should be done in 30 minutes. Soon, Itoki, Tokusada, and Kozetsu arrive at Koga's headquarters. Koga ninjas surround them and Enbei activates all the Azura units in the building and wants to recall some more from the Aiga Ashult, but Aiga is jamming the signal and they can't get in contact. Ryoko and Kari join Itoki and fight the Koga. Itoki wonders why they are there and Ryoko explains that she came to take back something that was taken from her. Kari apologizes to Itoki and explains that she was passing information to Koga and came to make amends because she wants to be friends with Itoki. 
Ryoko and Kureya then stay behind handling the Koga, while the Toki, Tomkasada, and Kozetsu proceed forward. Itoki and the rest face some Koga ninja who call the Azure units. In an instant, Itoki uses Iga's ninja core and defeats most of the Azure units but gets exhausted right away from using the ninja core. Kozetsu helps him escape, while Tokusada takes care of the remaining ninja and Azure units. Itoki and Kozetsu proceed, but face Enbi and his son Himura. However, Suzuku appears, allowing Itoki and Kozetsu to proceed while he faces Enbi and Himura. Itoki and Kozetsu reach Kato, who sees that Itoki is wearing the secret Aiga Ninja Core. Itoki offers it in exchange that Kato doesn't make any moves against other villages, that he destroys all of the Azure units, that he admits all of his crimes and finally gives up being a ninja. Kato refuses, stating that since he isn't pointing his blade at him means he has no intention of killing him. Countless Koga ninja will return once they crush Aiga and Kido, just need to wait a bit. Itoki asks Kido why he wants to destroy all villagers and all ninjas. He guesses it's because he didn't want to be a ninja but was forced and doesn't want anyone else to suffer the same way. Being born in a ninja family, your future is decided and you have to endure pain and dirty work. If that's why he is doing it, then maybe Kido is a kind person deep down. And if that's why he hates ninjas, then Itoki is willing to forgive him. Suzuku then capture Himura and asks him and Enbi what they think of Koga's current state and what lies ahead after the Ishura kill every ninja. Enbi states that the powerful will stand on top and the weak will die. It always has been like that, and Suzuku's father died because he talked about soft crap like the future. Himura wonders why Suzuku is opposing Kato, and if he intends to be the new leader and Suzaku confirms. Hearing that, Himura gets angry and takes out a hidden blade and stabs Suzaku, stating he will never follow him. Suzaku states that Kido doesn't have a heart and so he is going to remake Koga. Kido states he killed Yumika because she was in his way, and he wants to kill all the ninja because they are an eyesore. He wonders if Itoki will still forgive him and states that if he wants to avenge his mother, now is his only chance. Itoki gets angry and prepares to draw his blade, but Kosetsu stops him. Itoki then calms down and prepares to leave, stating he has nothing more to discuss with him. Itoki is secretly recording and streaming to Shion and NSC, who after getting the footage are ready to go. Earlier, Itoki tells Shion that he will get testimony from Kido that he ordered the attack on the villages. Juzen then gives permission, and the NSC storms the Koga headquarters. Itoki tells Kido to surrender quietly, however, Kido then activates his ninja core and fires at them. Kamazetsu blocks the shot but gets knocked out. Kido then starts attacking Itoki, wondering why he is even resisting as he will eventually perish. Itoki disagrees and states that protecting what's dear comes from the will to preserve things and risking your life to keep something going is what it means to live. He runs towards Kido, who prepares to shoot him, but Kosetsu attacks him, giving Itoki a chance to strike, but Kido ends up being protected by his armor. Itoki and Kido then keep fighting exchanging blows, but using the secret ninja core, Itoki manages to overpower Kido. Suzaku had defeated Enbi and Himura, but is injured. Takasada comes and asks him if he can hold until NSC comes, but Suzuku intends to go after Kido. Itoki points his blade at Kaido. Kido states he doesn't feel guilty, and that while Itoki was born blessed, he was born defected. Kido states that Itoki is so merciful that he can't even kill his parents' killer, while Kido is so merciless that he would even kill an infant. Kido has nothing to regret, and is what he is. Itoki states that are just excuses, and he talks like he is the victim and couldn't help it. He tells him that everyone is born with unfairness in their lives and they need to bear it. Itoki then leaves and goes to help Kosetsu. Kido stands up and takes his gun. He tells Itoki he is quite kind and points his gun at Itoki, however, Tokusada then comes and stabs Kido. Shion and other NSC come in that moment and Tokusada states he'd done it on his own will. Tokusada tells Itoki that he no longer needs a babysitter and to Kosetsu to smile more often. He then jumps off the building. Shion calls the NSC and tells them that Tokusada is a wanted fugitive on the suspicion of attacking Koga and killing their chief. Several years later, Shion visits Kozo, who explains that they are maintaining a functional relationship with Koga and have not heard anything from Tokusada since he ran away. He wonders if she still wants to punish him and Shion states he is just going to do her job. Ryoko is working with her father. Karai became an actress and on the question why, she explains because she is a liar and decided to tell lies that make people happy. Suzuku has become the next Koga chief. Kozetsu visits Yumika's grave and tells her that Itoki is starting his first job. She believes he will stick with it, but also feels he may quit after three days. At a train station, Itoki saves a kid, who is about to fall onto the train tracks. The kid wonders if Itoki is a ninja, but Itoki tells him there is no such thing as ninjas. 